just for anyone who is tackling this topic here for the first time. It's obviously been a topic on this show uh, a few times, but maybe someone is is hearing microbiome or microbiota for the first time. What do these sort of very interesting words actually mean? Well, for us, we use the term microbiome and microbiota interchangeably. And what we're referring to is the collection of bacteria, microbes that live inside our digestive system. And so microbes actually colonize the entirety of our digestive system in our mouth all the way through to our colon, the very end of our colon. But usually when people refer to the gut microbiome, they're talking about the community of microbes that lives in our large intestine or colon. And that's because that's where the majority of these bacteria live. So even though we have microbes in our um, stomach and our small intestine, um, most of the work, scientific work has been done on the microbes that live in our colon. So tell me about the relationship between the, the bacteria in the, in the colon and our own physiology. I know growing up as a kid, I used to hear bacteria and I thought, ooh, that's a germ. You know, we don't want that. And so I'd love to understand a bit more about this relationship. And, and also, what would happen if we didn't have microbes? <laughs> I think, you know, like you, I grew up also thinking about bacteria as germs. I mean, you get sick and you take antibiotics. That's supposed to kill bacteria, right? So we're all sort of grow up thinking that bacteria are bad things. But really, you know, most microbes are in fact uh, either beneficial or benign, don't really do anything. It's a small percentage of microbes that actually cause disease. But of course, they get a lot of attention because of the problems they cause. But really, the, the human body is not just a collection of human cells. We're actually a composite organism. We have our human cells, but we're also host to a huge number of microbial cells as well. And so this ecosystem between our human cells and our microbial cells is, you know, really an, a fascinating um, field of study to understand how these two parts of our biology, our microbial half and our human half, work together um, and how these two halves can, um, we can a adjust, you know, how they're functioning so that each side functions better and leads to better health. And just to add to that, you know, I think this question of like, what, what would it look like to not have a microbiota or to not have any microbes? Um, it, you know, we have to consume food, food has to pass through a dig digestive tract. And um, of course, until recently, it wasn't possible to eat sterilized food. So microbes are everywhere. And so um, just by virtue of the fact that we're consuming, you know, things in the environment, these foods, we're going to be consuming bacteria. And so that means the bacteria can um, transit our digestive tract. Ones that are adapted to take up residence there can start to live there. And it would just take an overwhelming immune response, so much energy to put into the immune system to try to cleanse this, to cleanse our digestive tract and keep it, keep it sterile that, you know, over evolutionary time, we've worked on this relationship where we can have microbes there that by and large, don't cause disease and help exclude many of the pathogens that do cause disease. And so I think the, you know, one way to think about this is over evolutionary time, we have cultivated a relationship with a group of microbes that can, um, on the one hand, exclude pathogens, take up the niche space in our gut and kind of occupy it. So they provide competition for the bad guys. And then the beauty added on top of that is these microbes um, can do all sorts of other wonderful things for us, like um, help us digest food and, um, you know, synthesize molecules that um, appear to be important for our health. And, you know, then and a lot of other things that have happened, um, you know, over the course of evolution where we've actually become reliant upon the signals in, you know, that our microbes produce for different uh, aspects of development and metabolism. I'm wondering, we talk about bacteria helping us digest parts of our food and, and the indigestible components of carbohydrate in particular, uh, fiber. 
why is it that that we have outsourced that? Why can't our own cells perform that function? Yeah, I mean that's a great question. If you if you look at the capacity for degrading complex carbohydrates that the microbiome encodes, it's just massive. It's, you know, tens of thousands of genes compared to just a handful of genes that we encode. So it would be a pretty big endeavor on our human genomes part to try to encode all of this. The other thing, um, advantage to having, you know, it not encoded within the human genome is because, you know, you're sort of stuck with your human genome that you have at conception. Um, your microbiome is actually adaptable to your environment. So your microbiome can more closely match the carbohydrate environment of your food. So for example, say you grow up in Japan and you eat a lot of seaweed. We know that there are microbes that are able to degrade these complex carbohydrates found in seaweed. So if you just pick up one of those microbes, now you're able to use that carbohydrate source as, as a nutrient source for you. But if you grow up in another part of the world where seaweed isn't part of your diet, your human genome doesn't have to worry about it. You just don't pick up a microbe that encodes that. You instead pick up microbes that encode um, the degradation of the carbohydrates that, that match the diet mm -hmm. that you're eating. So it, it does provide this advantage of, of having, you know, sort of a, a, a bespoke microbiome or a bespoke capability to degrade the food source that you are actually consuming at that time. And if you grow up in the US and you move to Japan, you can potentially pick yeah. up a microbe that helps you degrade a local food that you might start eating partway through your life. So it is this really malleable component of our biology that can um, adapt to aspects of our diet. Now that that presents a vulnerability to this um, mm -hmm. malleability and that uh, microbiota can um, deteriorate and change potentially in ways that are not beneficial to our health. Mm -hmm. We can talk more about that, but, um, but it does represent an aspect of our biology that is um, malleable and therefore advantageous in certain. Sure. Respect. Yeah. I mean, there's hope in that, right? There's opportunity to, to kind of modulate it and, and restore it, which is of course what a lot of your work is centered on. Mm -hmm.